Right, let's get into texturing this. Uh, and to do this, we will use the input geometry normals. And then we're just going to work out where we've got the top facing and then where we've got not top facing. Um, so separate x, y, z. Oh, wait. Uh, vector math. We need to do an absolute first just to make sure that everything is like pointing in the same direction or like double sided axes, if that makes sense. And then separate. And then you can see that we've got our x and our y. So I'm going to just add these two together. So we've got the tops and we've got the faces. So we can start putting windows onto the um, the faces of the buildings now and we can use the tops. So everything seems to have a little bit of Z. Well, we can just basically say where this is less than. Interesting and glitchy. Um, this is odd. Can anybody explain this one to me? The absolute. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's. Because it was just the, it's just this less than. How confusing. Something is using window map. Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? But this is just taking geometry normal. Maybe we should try it with the texture normal. I've not had that happen before. Oh, so bizarre. Have we got normals correct? Uh, recalculate outside. Maybe set the middle. This is really weird. Well, maybe we can just use a color ramp instead. There we go. <laughs> yeah, found a way to break it. Okay, so this is worked fine. Um, and then we also need to know where the floor level is, which is going to be everything which is black out of this. So take a math node less than like 0.1, maybe less than that, 0 0.0001. Hmm. Finding loads of things that are like not quite behaving just how I expect. You could dot with a normal. Okay. Vector math uh, with the. Wait, what am I dotting together? So I've got the. Uh... Oh, oh, I get you. So you assign, you say like X axis. Can I do it for the Y as well? Oh my God, that's really clever. Well, that's way easier. Great. Let's just delete all of these then. So just taking the absolute of the normal, put through it, put it through a dot product and absolutely crank the axes that you're trying to mask. Yeah, nice. That's a really good tip. Thank you. And it only has to be above one for the masking to work fine. So, uh, yeah. So we need a 
a window texture. I'm just going to use a grid for this. I'm just going to use ping pong. Um, yeah, ping pong. So uh, we need the object coordinates. And then I'm going to need Z, X, and Y. So I need, maybe I should just use a wave in the Z and a wave in, oh wait, maybe I do need it in all three. So let's just separate this. Uh, I'm going to use a converter vector math. Set this to scale. So just to do the, use brick textures. Mm. The brick texture node is so nasty. And it's super unoptimized as well. I know it's quicker, but I feel like just on principle I shouldn't use it. Yeah. <laughs> Works well for Windows. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we can just knock this out quickly. So uh, convert, separate x, y, z. It's just, as soon as anybody tells me that something's really badly optimized, then I'm just like, mm, I don't want it. So, yeah. Um, okay. Vector, no wait, converter, math, ping pong. And then I'm going to do the same for the Y and for the Z. And then I'm going to do smooth minimum, smooth minimum. And then we also want to do, um, is this working properly? Yeah, uh, and then we can just do a snap as well. So scale, add another in here, vector snap at one, because we're doing um, all of our ping pongs are at a half. So they go up and then down to 50, uh, sorry, to, to half. And then, so this is one across. Oh my God, my brain's not working zero to one because we're going up to 0 0.5 in the middle. Um, so we can snap at ones and then I can put this through a white noise and that's going to give us the randomized windows and then color dodgy color burn. Yes. Oh my God. Thank you. It's just like so many different shaders going on at the moment and I'm just trying to like think about them. Okay. Color dodge, color burn. So we have our glazing bars being defined, or like the window frames being defined by the color burn. And then the color dodge, you're using that lot. Yeah, honestly, just uh, just grab color dodge, color burn and put it into a, like a group. And then you've got like uh, spacing and fall off. I don't know why I haven't done this. I literally use it in every material, spacing and fall off. There we go. The Erin ramp. You know, you just... Okay, it's the Erin ramp. Thanks for helping me name that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, because it's Windows, I'm actually just going to go all the way up. Um, and then I want to have these be shiny because they're glass. So, I can add a principal shader. And then um, plug this into the base color and also use the factor sliders for roughness. Um, vector, oh wait no, group factor sliders. Oh, we are getting some groups in here. Um, into the mask, into the roughness. So the frames are matte. Um, and then I also want this to be metallic. So it looks extra shiny. Um, or do we want it to be trans? No, we don't want transmission. Metallic is good. And then after that, we want to affect the normals of our windows individually. 
also the white noise to make them bend at different angles with the yeah exactly um so i'm just going to add a mix rgb and set the first one to be 0 0.5 0 0.5 and 1 so this is our like base uh like base normal direction to go into our normal node our normal map node why would you want them to bend at different angles because um glass facade windows and glass are not flat this is maybe a render um there was a really good example somebody posted on facebook a little while ago and i did a shader for it um i think it might have been like the front of an airport um i'm not very good at searching for things can only find renders yeah <laughs> literally nothing's real um reflection oh my god what is this okay I am just terrible at... Okay, here's an example. So glass is bendy. It's very bendy. And it's the way it's processed, it's like supposed to be flat, but it's also really... Um, you hang it in a frame, the frame contracts and expands and it bends, and then you just get this like warped look, warped look. So we can add like a little bit of noise, but we can also offset the noise depending on the pane. And we can also just change the direction of the pane so i think we're going to just do that last one because we've already got the white noise for it so our mix shader here we can just like um so to make sure that these go in all directions we need to add a vector math and subtract 0.5 uh, from all three you're just gonna have to trust me on this so it when we add them some of them go in one direction and some of them go in the other direction um, because we have like a less than and a more than zero normal i will do a video on normals but um yeah this factor slider is now going to let us control the offset like how out of true that glass is so we're going to add a normal map and we're just going to plug this into the color this into the normal and then that into the principle board. Um, so let's find some buildings with reflections. Um, and then as we increase this factor, you can see that the glass is all like going in different directions. Uh, so you just want to have it like a little bit. And then we can also do a little bit of noise just to make sure that it's got some wiggle to it. So just going to add a little bit on here. Where's that object coordinates? Oops. Uh, D. Okay. And then this also wants to be offset by the... I'm going to set that to 4D and put the value into the W. That's going to give it a different one per glazing thing. Use mask transform. Um... I could use the mask transform, but I really want to have that like difference per panel, just because they're different panels. Um, so I'm just going to do it this way, and I'm going to plug this into the a bump node, I guess. So back to a bump, put that in front of the normal map, and plug this into the height. Bump is always way too high, so distance 0.1, strength 0.1, maybe even less. 0.01 and that's just starting to give us like a little bit of wobbly glass make the noise larger uh, okay yeah good shout And we also want a few different types of buildings. So we've got these like super mirrored glassy ones. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, so these real glassy ones. Some kind of like weird Asimov kind of city vibe going on. Um, I guess other buildings that we might want would be, I don't know, like more bricky. We can do the same kind of idea. Um, so I'm just going to take this Aaron ramp and then if you have a look at this, then we can use like a way higher spacing. So basically smaller windows. You're getting this like issue where some of the wall becomes black and that is because we are looking, we're going in both axes here. So the, basically the wall is intersecting the window frame. Um, but it's kind of cheap procedural. So <laughs> big windows for the CEOs. Yeah. Got to get some little ones for the rest of us then. Okay. And then, doesn't this look cool? Oh my god. It just makes me want to paint when I play with Blender. Um, okay. Need the brick texture. I'm just going to use the brick texture this time. I'm going to cave. Brick texture. Ooh, not in there. Needs to be object coordinates. And needs to be much higher scale even higher. Do bricks not go vertically? Is this a thing they don't do? Who designed this node? Okay, let's make our own bricks. You could use, you could map the vector I could do. Oh, let's do that. That's probably going to be quicker. I really want to get onto the masking stuff and not Simon for sure. I'm yeah, I feel like Simon wouldn't like this, uh, like this shader. Um, okay. So we're getting sliding on this one and then maybe from like, okay. Axis angle. I want, okay. This is the one we want. We want like 90 and 45. Oh hey, wait, wrong 45. So there we go. That's given us the walls being bricks. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's on like shader nodes at the moment, because I guess they've got like particle nodes. Is particle nodes still going? I mean, like, are they still developing it or have they reached a point with that now? They are. Okay. I just haven't heard anything about it in so long. If you can hear like a rumbling sound, the tumble dryer is just to, just started, just joined the party. Um, right. So we can take this mask and we can use this for windows, but we can also add uh, with a mix RGB. So got to get my head around where we're masking. So we need certain buildings, which we're going to use greater than on the Voronoi. Um, math, take Voronoi color, add a greater than. So this just masks off certain buildings. Like so. Point three. Point seven. Okay. Um, today's stream is about particle nodes. Who's streaming? Does Simon stream? Is that what you mean? Pablo. Oh, uh, Blender Everydays? Have they changed it to Blender Everydays, haven't they? Yeah, I haven't actually watched them in since like January, maybe? I feel like I just got so overwhelmed with how many updates were coming out, and I was just like, cannot stay on top of this because I was changing blender build like every few days. Um, right, here is our mask. B 
between these window frames and these window frames. And then this goes into our factor sliders. And then I'm also going to need to do the same kind of a mask for the normals. So we've got Those are the normals for our nicely glazed buildings. It's impossible to learn Blender as quickly as it updates. I do not envy people who are starting Blender now. Like, I mean, I kind of do, because Blender's great fun to learn. I guess frustrating as well. But yeah, there's so much coming out at the moment, and people are so vocal about it. Um, but then I'm still like on Facebook. I see people all the time who are like, well, I made this in Blender 2.76. It's like, why? Why are you still using that? That Blender 1 guy. Oh yeah, I saw that video actually. I was so happy that Tom gave him the key for it. I thought that was so, just like, that's so Blender. Such a cool guy. Blender users always tend to want to be generalists. Yeah. I think it's because there's so many like amateur amateur people in the community, which is great, obviously. Um but then yeah, you could specialize. Like I think a lot of us have specialized in shaders, and then there's some people on this server who've specialized in like um like procedural modeling as well. But then there's so much in Blender that like just don't touch. You know, like who's doing stuff with the um like the video sequence editor? Anybody making films with that? I have done like two or three edits in it. Have you actually? Oh my god. It's not fun. I just don't really understand the whole like adjustment strips and I'd rather just do stuff to the strip. Animation will be your end goal. It's. Have you seen um, Jacob Holiday's new video? He's going through like a rebrand at the moment. It's really. Um, I'm trying to think of what his name is. Uh, what his YouTube name is. Um, let me just double check actually. His thing is. Um, Open VFX? Is that him? Open. Oh, wait, no. Sorry, I'm just like going back through a chat log where he shared something. Oh, in light VFX. Yeah, he's like rebranded his channel. This is a really fun video. It's like one of his first uh, character animations. And he got the robot off Rachel Does Art. Is that her name, Rachel? Rachel Frick. Art from Rachel. Another amazing blender artist. She does these really cool robots and just like, yeah. I love seeing people's hard surface stuff. Um, oh yeah, she did this, which I think got some traction. Looks really cool. Yeah, she's a good artist. Yeah, she's been on Blender Nest uh, a little while ago, actually. I'm not sure she's been on since. Um, but she did an episode. What browser is this? This is Opera. Good old Opera. It's got like built-in VPN sort of thing and built-in ad blocker, which I appreciate. Um, and it's quite secure. Um, what? Use DuckDuckGo. Um, Okay, I just don't like DuckDuckGo. Like, I know it's good. Like, ethically, ethically good. But, okay, let's try and search something that I would search normally, like, um, I don't know, like a PBR wood texture. The way that they index their results. Like, Where's textures.com? How are they not at the top of that list? Although it does look, 
like it's coming up with results. I haven't used it for a few years since I was back on Linux. Nor Texture Haven. Yeah, no. Literally neither of those two are on this page. We've got CC Zero Textures and Share Textures. Okay, Texture Haven. Free PBR. Crazy. But sometimes you'll search something and it will come up like loads of French results. And it's like, that's not exactly useful to me as a non-French literate person. Um, yeah, so we need to add our bricks to the... Um, we found several small texture resources. That is true, actually. I've been sending one of my friends loads of textures. Actually, somebody just came out with a texture pack today who I want to give a mention to because it's really, really good. Let me just find it real quick. Um, I mean, I think he's doing fine without me mentioning him. But have a look at this. His name is... Um, there we go, Julio Sillet. But he's just released these. I'm pretty sure they're made with substance. You might recognize some of these. All of his packs are free if you want to just download them one by one. Incredible work. So useful. Yeah, substance. Are they on Blender Kit? I really need to actually try out some of those like asset manager add-ons. I think that would probably be useful for my workflow. Um, right, so look at our bricks. I'm just going to add a bump node, a V bump. Add that into the height and then put this into the top here. Sorry, my nodes are getting so messy, but it's just, it's one of those shaders that sort of builds and builds. Um, we should have him here, yeah. If anybody knows Julio, get him on. Um, hmm, this is interesting. Um... <laughs> Yeah, just sweep everything into a group and it's you can forget about all of the crimes. So what are we doing wrong here? We've got this mixing. Um so we shouldn't be getting any of the of that one and we're not. Oh, it's because of the is it the roughness? Um, never used normals before in a bump node. Oh, just plugging them through. It basically just hands it on. So if you wanted to add another one here, you just plug the normal in and it like inherits it. And then you can put in something in here and you've got the individual controls for whatever you're doing with those top three sockets. And this normal goes straight through and this just gets added to it. So you can have like the strength all the way down and this will still be outputting the normals from the previous one. Uh, with the strength set to one, can it? And the distance high. Oh wait, we don't have anything in the height. Uh, I do think it still just adds it though. Oops. Um, but yeah, maybe it makes it like so much of a difference that it's insignificant. Um, right, I just want to get my head around this normal stuff for the bricks. So we've got a mask that's working okay. So we've got some buildings of glass and some are going to be brick and some of them sort of intersect. Uh, and then we're also controlling the roughness with that. And then the normals are also being controlled. And then we also need to multiply minus one of the mask for glass to... What? 
Mi multiply minus one of mask for glass to brick and then mix. Is that for the, is that to make the glass not have brick on it? Is that what you mean? To get the brick mask. Um, this one. So to do, um, oh, not multiply by minus one, but to subtract one or subtract from one. Is that what you mean? And then put the bricks through. Yeah, to negate it. Yeah, yeah. Good shout. Thank you. So this, um, maybe I can just do it this way, actually. I don't need to do that at all. I can just switch the color to the, the sockets around. Um, and this just needs to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 1. And that will give me like a flat. flat thing. Oh, I know what I'm doing. So that comes from the brick mask and then this actually goes onto here. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And that goes into the height. Cool. We still have these um, big black grid marks. What's that coming from? Oh, from the base color? Wait, where's the base color coming from? Coming from a displacement. Is that right? Oh no, it's not. <laughs> My noodles were just lined up. Okay, so I um, need another mix on here and I need to take this greater than again. And then this is passing through the correct things now. Yeah, if you're trying to follow along with this, then I'm really sorry about what a mess this is. I can barely even follow it myself. But the concepts are there. If you're, if you're learning the concepts, you need to release a free pack of masks, please. Masking is like the key thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to watch, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, we're just going to make this uh, just black and white on the glass and then like an orange texture on the bricks. Maybe a little bit less orange. And then we can change the number of the brick buildings with this threshold. And just take in the Z facing faces um, with this dot product. And then we just need to give that like a, make it flat and just give it a different color. Um, so again, I'm just going to use a mix on here. So the socket zero needs to be the flat texture and the flat color. Um, so that can just be like a dark gray. And then again, we're just going to move this down, put the roughness through. Make it matte. And then again, I'm going to put the normal through and we're going to make it flat with uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1. Oh, we've got that weird thing going on again with our screen space stuff. Interesting. Well, I'm not going to debug that. That is just a quirk of the city. Um, let's turn all of this into a group. Face culling. Oh, maybe. Hmm. 
you don't have blackface cutting on. And it doesn't seem to change anything. Blend mode, alpha. I don't feel like any of these settings actually change anything except from Eevee. Oh, thank you, Mum the Wiser. Um, there will be a recording going out. It's going to be fairly long. So it might be in two parts, but yeah. Thanks for coming by. Um, all of these don't seem to change anything. Um, <laughs> are we in part two? Um, no, I don't think so. Maybe? How long are we in so far? I think it's two and a half hours so far. Still building the brushes. Um, yeah, I think I will get onto the, um, We'll get onto masking in like two seconds, just once I've grouped this. And then uh, I just need like a scale thing, scale control. And then, um, yeah, then we can get into the masking with the vertex paint. Or did we say we were going to do texture painting? Either way, we need to get into that as well. Uh, so input scales into all three of these. And then um, this displacement scale needs to be proportional to, or inversely proportional to this scale. So scale over there. And then this one's a math node. Convert over math. Come in on here, divide. And it goes into the scale. So it's five. And we're going down to point three, so that's going to be like uh, five, less than five, two. Yeah, that'll do. It looks kind of like a city, not like a realistic one, but it's still kind of fun. Vertex. Oh, vertex painting. Yeah. Okay, we'll do it with vertex painting. Um, yeah, to make way for the. Um, yeah, displacement not breaking it up, and we need to have this set. Oh, it's just like everywhere that you've got scale, you need to set it off your, off the front of the thing. Um, so we can duplicate this math up. So the front end of this has a scale of five. So. See, I only release like cleaned up node trees. So this is like a horrible awakening. Just seeing how I work actually. Uh, this needs to be 25 times bigger. And then we want uh, fives into 433. Was that 87? Yeah. Cool. Uh, is there a good way to keep displacement height and vector height and vector scale proportional? Um, yes. Just with a math node. Um, is that what you mean? So the I've just taken the scale off the front and I've multiplied it just so they all go together and then the oh right yeah to do the displacement you just do a divide and you put the like the scale of everything into the bottom of it and then this top value becomes like the um the control for like how high it is but it's always relative to your um overall scale so I'm just going to plug that in here. So we've got displacement scale as well. Um, displacement. Mm. 
and it's been so hot here today like actually felt like a summer's day i know it's the middle of the end of july but it's it never really gets that hot here in the north of england and then today it's just been like absolutely roasting crazy just not used to it um so i think that's all of the displaced nodes cool oh and it's done displacement above bsdf again okay perfect uv let's get on to the masking this is when we start painting our worlds city okay sweet so um i will also have to work out like the normal normalize the scale for each of these just to make sure everything's uh, in proportion to each other and we need loads of subdivisions we need to like and save thank you um okay control e subdivide oops oh, i should have just done that actually uh control e subdivide we need like 40 We can go up to a hundred cuts, is that it? Okay. And then we're gonna subdivide again. Maybe twice. I just want like really high resolution for this. How many verts can we handle? 256,000. Yeah, that's probably okay. We want vertex painting. <laughs> Crashes stream. Hopefully not. Just um, I should, might just check my. Normally when I'm working, I actually keep this open just so I can make sure my uh, memory's not running out. Do I have any hard drives? That's worrying. Okay. Whew. We're good. We're good. Holy cause. Yeah. I mean, I want some more. You, I just want more. <laughs> um, I really want the thread ripper. Um, okay, so there's something that we need to think about for this masking, and that is linear versus sRGB color space. So, uh, how many cores can Blender utilize? All of them. If you had a thousand cores, Blender would just use them all. Blender is so well multi-threaded. It's great. Um, yeah, obviously if you're rendering on a GPU. Although if you had that many cores, you would just render on a CPU. So yeah, it handles it really, really well. Um, yeah, so I had this conversation the other day with Luca and Troy about sRGB and HSV and we were so it was, it was from it was prompted by Zap basically doing vertex painting let me show you an example if i okay so do we all understand the idea of hue saturation and value being separate ideas um so if you change the saturation the hue shouldn't change or should i also just go into that real quick um, just set this up so I can show you. Oh, okay. So um, RGB are obviously separate channels. Um, but wait, am I not? Okay, object mode. Um, so yeah, RGB are separate channels and hue, saturation and value also want to be separate channels um so basically when we look at this we've got red green and blue and they don't like they don't affect each other so this is why when you have a mask often in like game engines you'll have masks that use um like a red channel for their for, for one thing like roughness and then the blue channel will be used for normal oh wait no definitely not normal for like height and then something else will be used for like line work 
Um, then sometimes you also use the alpha channel as well for something else. So that's really useful because the channels ID maps, yeah, yeah. The channels are separate, so they don't, you can separate them. Whereas HSV has this other idea. So basically you've got the hue being the position around the circle, the saturation being the distance from the center of the circle, and the value being this up the side. Although you'll notice that um, if we set RGB to 0.5, then HSV thinks the value is 0 0.735. I haven't checked this, but I think. Why does it go darker at different hues? Um, that's to do with luminosity. So you mean like, why does blue look darker than green? Is that right? Or like, why is this looking more luminous? Yeah, so value and luminosity are separate uh, ideas. So sometimes you'll get HSL and sometimes you'll get HSV. So for Blender, it uses HSV in, uh, in its calculations for this bit. Um, yeah, you can get in some painting programs, you can get, uh, like when you're picking colors, you can press a little button and it'll like do a, it'll lock the luminosity. So if you then go into like a cyan from blue, it'll go into like a darker version of cyan. It'll reduce the value to make the luminosity remain the same. Um, so if I take 0 0.735, which is what HSV thinks the value is when all RGBs are 0 0.5. And then if I do that to the power of 2.2, then you can see that that's basically 0 0.5. Um, and that's because HSV uses linear color space. No, wait, it doesn't. RGB is linear and HSV is not a linear space. Um, you don't really need to understand this, but it is important to know it for what we're about to do with the masking, because let me just do this. So if I take a um, math node, oh wait, just a regular math node, set this to greater than, and if I set a separate HSV, no wait, separate HSV, So the output of this H should be this value, right? Between zero and one. And if I put this H into the threshold here, then we should get this, right? Where it comes down and you can see that that's moving. You can also see that it slows down at certain points, even though I'm moving more or less constantly across the slider. So. And also if I just change the saturation, you can see that this line, our threshold is, is changing, even though it, we're apparently staying for the same hue. So to get around this, we need to raise this to the power of 2.2. And if we do that, then wait, Maybe we raise it to the power of one over 2.2. Then it should remain, it's still changing, but way less. Basically Bartek, who is super clever on this stuff, came in like, yeah, RGB versus linear. This is why they are different. Um, but as long as you're doing either to the power of 2.2 or to the root of to like the 2.2 root of something, then it makes it possible for us to mask our uh, hue brackets. So instead of just having RGB as three channels, we can use like a, uh, we can have five channels. We have five shaders. We have five different things that we want in our space. So we want to have multiple different channels. Uh, it was separate to the power. Yeah, 
I was just thinking that we could probably just do it to the H output, but maybe you're right actually. Um, I think I made a group node for it. Yeah, sRGB linear. Um, so does that improve it? It's still got a little bit of movement, but it's like, it's very little. So Troy, who was the guy that me and Luca were talking to, he's super knowledgeable about color science. Um, I think that's like his career is just researching color science. Um, yeah, he was basically saying that there's no standardized model for HSV. Um, so yeah, just inside this, all I've got happening is separate power and then combine. So yeah, basically this is just for us to get additional masking. Getting warm, warm and dehydrated, right? I'm just gonna have like a big drink for a second, excuse me. Oh, I can cut that out in post. The choice, yeah, water break. I should probably like have a stand up and stretch my legs, but there we go, I'm a professional. We'll keep going. Um, so if you need to get vertex colors into your shader, it's actually really easy to do. Um, we have a node called the attribute node in input, input attribute, and it has a name field. You can put anything in here that relates to um, an attribute that you've got somewhere else, right? And vertex colors automatically generate one called col with a capital C. But if you were to generate more layers, um, so we can have up to eight, is that right? They are adding very slowly. Um, so yeah, this is why Zach was wanting to add this, like, have this different method of masking because you have a limit to the number of vertex layers, vertex color layers you can have. Um, yeah, that is it. That's all it's giving me, eight different layers that we now have to remove. But whatever these are called, you can invoke that with this attribute node here, right? So if I view this, um, if we're going to vertex paint, on the correct color. Um, so I should probably assign a color to each of the to each of the nodes that we're using. Um, or I might just use a color ramp just so that I've got myself like a little palette. So if I set this to constant, uh, and we're just going to set some different values. Um, sorry, some different hue values. So we're going to go like 0.2 in here. And then uh, how many do we want? We want five. Is that right? Four. And then distribute stops evenly. So we go 0.3. Yeah, I think there's another way to get palettes in but I'm not sure what it is. Um, so I just, this is just gonna let me color pick. Um, anybody that doesn't know, you can hover over a color field and press E, and then you have a color picker that you can use like anywhere on any surface in Blender. So if you wanna color pick an icon, you can do that. Uh, yeah, you don't actually need to click in stuff. That also applies for copy and pasting. Um, so if I wanna copy 250 into my step, I can just hover over it, press control C and then control V and without ever clicking anything, you don't need to click. Blender just knows that you probably want to do that. It's pretty clever like that. It's nice. It makes it a little bit more efficient. Okay. We have a quick palette set up. Um, so these are the colors we're going to use. I'm just going to paint just so that we can start thinking about how we we're not laying stuff out yet, we're just designing how we mask. Okay, maybe creating that many vertices was not a great idea, but we have them now. 
What did we go for? Oh, we've got 1.5 million verts on this plane. If you want a full palette, you should change color mode from RGB to HSV and constant to far. Yeah, it will give you the full thing. The thing is, I want um, just specific bands for the masking. Um, I will just show that though, actually, that's a good thing to have. Oh, if you ever want to reset a node, hover over and press backspace. Um, so RGB to HSV, hit far, and yeah, just set this to red and red, and you'll get a full spectrum. Um, yeah, really useful, especially if you're doing like um, iridescence, then you can put like the full spectrum through a Fresnel, Fresnel node. And it will give you like that iridescent sheen as it turns away, which is always quite nice. Um, cool. Uh, so I'm just going to remove the rest of those color layers. I think they're probably lagging, slowing my computer down. This is just going to take a minute while it processes it. And I'm going to save as well. Does anybody else have any cool shaders that they've been working on? We can share them on stream if you want. There we go. Back to the one. Oh, that was too many. Okay. One there. There we go. You have your mask nodes. Are they in the noise pack or are they in, or are they just a separate thing? separate thing yeah do release them let me know as well because i'll definitely want to invest in something like that so useful let's just remove one layer one level of subdivision put this up to the top Does anybody have a gum road that you would like me to share? If you've got any links or anything, just throw them in the chat and I can have a look at them. Um, it's always interesting seeing what other people are getting on with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the five bands for the, the painting here. Okay, that's slightly improved that. That should work a bit better. Um, so we're invoking the color layer here in Col, because that's the name of it in the vertex color. And then I'm just hovering over the band and I'm painting with it. And then again, I'm gonna hover over the next one. And I'm just drawing out regions at the moment. Um, again, I'm just gonna do these last to got to be careful about where you overlap stuff as well um i don't think we'll get into adjacencies today with like blending realistically in between areas but we'll just get it so that we can position stuff um this blend mix here oh yeah let me load that up noise pack so this is taylor's noise pack syncretic 3d man these promotional things you did look so good. They look properly like rough plaster. So nice. And you can do stuff really easily like Venetian plaster with this as well. Uh, Venetian plaster. Um, Venetian plaster is like when you see plaster and it's shiny, they buff it. But you get some really nice like uh, sort of scumble texture underneath the, the gloss. But yeah. That noise pack is like perfect for doing this stuff. So yeah, I will put a link for this in the YouTube description as well. Um, cool, so because we are doing our RGB linear stuff 
with our map here. What it lets us do is change the value and have the value essentially like divorced from the hue. So we've got like an additional separate uh, mask going on. Oh yeah, the noise pack is free. So, but also uh, support your favorite creators, tip them. But uh, yeah, grab it for free as well. Um, yeah, so because we've managed to get hue not to be affected by changing the value, um, we can change the blend mask, the blend thing on here to value. And what this is going to let us do is change the value of like a whole swathe of everything without actually changing the hue, which means that we can paint an actual height map, like a like a landscape height map. So for example, maybe we just want to use the water on areas which are below a certain level. Um, and then everything which is above that is just like by default grass. So maybe these two are like default ones and then we paint these three on where we want them. That might be a nice way to do it because then we can also have them have a little bit of separation. Um, so if I just, we've got this at the moment, we need to work out which way, if it's power or root. Um, but we'll get onto that. So if we now take a separate HSV, uh, yeah, Taylor, is there a license for your um, noise pack? Is there any use restrictions? No. Okay, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Um, made for the community. Yeah. I think that's such a good thing. Like there's so many people out there making stuff that costs money and it's just not like, it's not really benefiting. It doesn't feel very blender, you know, like it doesn't feel very community ish. I get that everybody needs to make money as well, but, um, yeah. So you can see that we're getting these two coming in like really close together, the masks. Whereas when we have them at the power of 2.2, they're getting like a proper bit of separation in between, or it feels like more separation anyway. Um, the free pack is an ad for your paid pack. Okay, it's fine. There's <laughs> no ulterior motive. <laughs> We're going to use a range mask group, which I made the other day uh, with template. If you want to know how I get the template in here, um, you just go up to edit preferences node, wait, add on node pre presets, right? So I've set a location where I keep all of my blender files, my blender presets specifically. Um, and I just save stuff into there that I think is going to be useful and then that'll show up into your templates in every file that you've got. So I've got like architectural glass, I've got uh, the basher node, which is the one that textures stuff easily. Um, some like additional things that we've done. But yeah, range mask. They do kind of come in in random places though. So range from and to, well, we can have a look down here and see that this one is 0 0.2. So we're going to go from 0.15 to 0.25. It doesn't show up. Oh wait, <laughs> don't need that. Um, there we go. So that's the first one. And then the next one is like approximately 0 0.4. So 0 0.35 to 0.45. And that's kind of following on that one as well. Oh yeah, because that's 0.45. Those two are actually dead close. Um, might have to change that blue one just so it's a little bit less, uh, a little bit less close. 
0.6. Maybe I should just have actually evenly spaced these. 0.6. Um, okay, let's just get rid of that one. So maybe we only actually need three colors because we're only we have two defaults based on altitude, and then we have three that we're painting on. So I'm also just going to get rid of these two. Yeah, sorry for um, changing changing up distribute spots evenly. Um, just going to hop back into the color here. Vertex paint. And I'm just going to change the hue. So change the blend mode to hue. Grab the blue here. I'm just going to change these two. And then the other ones I think were still good. Just going to color these back in. Yeah, it's so useful changing the blend mode to if you're using HSV, then having these HSV like adjustment things. Super useful. Okay, so first one, second one, and third one is going to be 0.6. So we're going 0.55 to 0.65, just so we've got a bit of range in there. And that's those two. Nice. We can also have a look at the value and you can see that wherever there was a different hue, they're all like basically the same. Um, but we've got some different variation here. So we can use V. Oh, hey, Riaz, welcome. Um, so yeah, we're using the V for height in this case. So add a converter, no, in fact, a displacement. And I'm just going to play with this in the height. And plug that into the displacement. And then we're going to go into cycles. Can you show the range mask? I certainly can. It's very simple. You have from with a greater than. So basically anything which is greater than your from, but also less than your two. And then you multiply those two together because it's an and statement. So you multiply them. Um, yeah, that's literally all it does. It's quite simple, uh, but it is greater than and less than. So it's like a sharp fall off. Uh, Bartek had, whew, he had some really interesting way to do the, to do like a, a smooth one. Um, but it's just like a few extra nodes. Uh, it does give it like a smooth one and it lets you set like here the inner bounds, outer bounds or centered for that gradient, which is really clever. So um, yeah, I will also just drop this into the chat. A few extra, yeah. It just depends what you need it for. If you need smooth, then I guess it's useful. In this case, we are just gonna blend it with the vertex colors. Um, in terms of the displacement, we're going to do that by hand. And then uh, we're going to do, yeah, we'd like, we want the city to have a hard limit and we want the woodland to have a hard limit. So yeah, and change the mid level to zero there. Ooh, calculating scene BVH. This is when we run out of RAM. Okay, it's still going all right at the moment. Um, okay, yeah, we don't have anything that goes right the way down to zero, so cool. So how do we actually mix these together? We need to have um, a method for that. So anything below a certain limit on the value is going to be water. So below a certain altitude basically we're just going to say everything under that is sea level and we're going to mix it over to the sea so um you can take a math node on the value and this is going to be excuse me this is going to be greater than and then this is going to go into a mix 
uh, shader. So control shift right click it gives us the mix. Um, so zero is water. And if we have a look at this, when it loads, then hopefully this will be the water. So many little tricks by watching these. Thank you, I'm glad. Um, we also would like the water to not bend up the sides like that. That's not really convincing. So I am also going to mask the um yeah gonna mask the height here so basically anything below 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 oh my god i'm getting messy notes out in the open now okay so we've got our mix shader and we've got our greater than and our mix here so this is for controlling the height Um, and we want that to go to the bottom. That's our like general height. So the bottom is socket one. Um, I might just turn the subdiv subdiv off here. So we're just going to have a really low resolution thing, but it'll be a bit quicker. And then, uh, yeah. So I want to have the value that the water starts to be the same as the water level. So that's all that's saying there. Plus one for mic options. Thank you. You um yeah, you recommended well. So at the moment it kind of looks like a quarry. Make a Jake. Hey, welcome. We are still going strong. Um so we've got some pretty ugly looking grass, but grass nonetheless. Um so that's working for the height. We're gonna be able to paint some mountains in. Um, yes, yeah, Stephen's back to take the piss. Um, so where we have really steep sides on the grass, motorbike again, um, steep sides here. I want to just have that change to rock. Um, so in the grass shader, well, this is a simple one. We're just going to add a, uh, geometry and we're going to use normal again. So basically the same as the, oh, no viewer inside groups. So we're going to take the normal, yeah. So the same way that we did the buildings, we're going to take the normal and we're going to take the dot product of it. That, that works so well. Um, and we also need the absolute, do we? Yeah, I think we do. Um, so absolute of the normal uh, dot product of the, oh, I've broken it. How have I managed this? Oh, there we go. Um, absolute factor into the vector, change this to dot product, increase these a bunch. So this is now masking off our, uh, vertical faces. Um, and then, oh, we're in the water shader. This is why it's simple. Copy these into the grass shader. That's more like it. Paste them. Okay. So we've got the steep walls and we are literally just going to add, can you hear that motorbike? My God. So rude. And see, everybody who's like, mm, loud pipes save lives. No, no, they don't. They just make you look like a wanker. Then, here we go. Look at that, we got rock. My mic isn't picking it up. Okay, that's good. I'm glad. Um, let me just smooth this out. Um, dicing scale two. We get some, uh, we get some such loud bikes coming down here. We've got like a really main road outside the house. And then 
You can't say wanker. <laughs> no one's making you be PG. <laughs> um, so this dot product kind of lets you blend it. That's nice, isn't it? Ooh, too fast. Um, but yeah, basically you you want the vertical surfaces. The steeper they get, the more rocky they become because grass can't grow on it. He's wrecked his demonetization. I don't qualify for monetizing, so actually it's fine. <laughs> um, gonna mix these over here as well. <laughs> yeah, you need like a lot of um, you need a lot of watch time, like four thousand hours or something in the last twelve months. Um, it's a lot. Yeah, it used to be way easier to get monetized. No worries. Thank you for coming by, Jaren. I know it's super late for you. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. See you later. Um, I think I'm at like... Oh, the erosion node in Houdini. Yeah, I mean, I really do need to get into Houdini. It's just, um, it's just that I haven't. Uh, we just plug the normal into the bottom of there. Is that going to work? Um, yeah, that's perfect. So, yeah, what was I saying? Anyway. So if we just plug the normal into the bottom of this, then we can sort of smooth this out a little bit. Um, so we've got automatic rock on sharp faces now, on sheer faces. Um, just need to find a way to have it, um, to do the masking. So again, it's just going to be more and more mixed shaders and the and adding them to this displacement as well, because uh, we need to add it on top of this one, because this is like the altitude of the, the surface, the actual grass like on the ground. So if we have a city going up a hill, then you want that city to also go up the hill rather than override. So adding to displacement and mixing for the shaders. Um, there we go kind of want to group this together just because it's annoying annoying and ugly I really wanted the I might just end up putting the whole thing into a group just to hide the crimes again um, mix shade area so we also want to make sure that everything that is water remains water I don't want to have a city coming out through that um, so if we plug this into here. Um, so each one that we want to add comes into the bottom of the mix shader, and then the mask for that one comes into the top. And then hopefully, wait, you just need to add that. Been at it for hours. Yeah, it's three hours in so far. Is that right? Yeah, 10 o'clock. This has not been a speedy process. Okay, sand. We just need to add to the displacement in that case. So uh, vector mix RGB. And then we're gonna set this to add. We can use the same mask. And we're gonna take the displacement from our sand shader into the add on the bottom. And hopefully this will give us some nice sand. I reckon we'll have to put this mix shader with the water at the end, just so it overrides everything. Um, and let's ditch this and model something. Yeah, uh, if, I, if I mean, you guys can do the Blender Battle tonight if you want to, but I'll be around tomorrow if you want to do like a modeling, a modeling thing tomorrow. Um, 
That's always a fun time. And Taylor, you should get into it this time. You should come join. The blender battle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'll be a blast. They're so good fun. And you really get to see like how people behave under pressure. Especially with Steven there. <laughs> Just stay up all night. <laughs> um, okay, next one. This is the forest coming in. So we've got, oh wait, PSDF into socket one. And we have the second mask coming in to the factor. So we should get some trees down here. And then, ooh, trees everywhere. Have I done that the right way around? So check this range mask. Things are starting to chug a little bit on my computer, slowing down. <laughs> Jake is reliving last week's Blender battle. <laughs> Um, here we go. Yeah, Fab, come and do the Blender Battle with us next time. Uh, we'll do it tomorrow, it's so much fun. It, it's like six minutes each per round to add something to the scene. And I think it came out really good last time as well. Like, that render you did, Stephen, came out looking really nice. Um, what time? We can do it in an hour. What from now? Are you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it in an hour. Fuck your knows. <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> okay. Well, it's I'm. It's nice to feel appreciated. <laughs> right. Get your beers and keyboards and battle starts in 60 minutes. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, if you're watching this and you want to have a play with um doing some speed modeling, some stressful, stressful speed modeling, come and hang out with us in 90 minutes. Sure. Yeah. No, yeah, let's do it in 90 minutes. Stephen, you've got to be flexible here. <laughs> so I'm just masking these together. Because I don't have the displacement on yet, that brick is just like falling across. You got... Ooh, what dog do you have? Maybe I've already asked this. Uh, displacement for the city as well. A golden retriever. Oh, that's adorable. One year old as well, so still a puppy. Drop these in here. Have I gone silent again? Am I... Hello? Can you hear me? Nice, okay. So, we've still got that weird stuff going on with our city where it's going black. Oh my god, that is adorable. Wait, oh my god, this is going on stream. That is a really cute dog. Also, a nice bike, is that a cube? A track Marlin 4. Oh yeah, track, I see. Nice. Good stuff. I can't believe your dog needs glasses. That's uh, sad. It has two wheels. <laughs> um, okay. So why is our um, displacement so small here? Oh, 
I've been stupid. It's because I'm going into this displacement. So what I actually need to do is just combine the vectors. So this add goes into this displacement. And then the first add that we did, that was our um, height map, goes into this displacement, uh, into the height there. So this should look a little bit more as intended. Yeah, I would not normally make a shader like this in one sitting. So uh, apologies for the increasing mistakes that will start happening. Um, but I think it's going in the right direction. Oh, look at that. Oh my god, isn't that so good? That is fun. Okay, so we have painted on trees, and we have painted on sand, and we have painted on city. Um, we need to just make sure that the, uh, the last one that goes in here is the... Uh, so the grass can come in here. And then this sits on the end. Just to make sure that the water is like the last thing so that it cuts across everything. Um, is there any way to color the noodles? Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is not pleasant, is it? I don't think there is to be honest. Not individually. I don't think it's possible. Is this going on YouTube? Yes, it certainly is. Masks for Erin. Okay, I want this. You can all see my, my email address. I'm going to have to take that out in post. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I need to make a note to myself real quick just to take out my email address. It's exactly what you'd expect, yeah. It really is, isn't it? Oh my god, I've just made a note, but I've written my own name instead. Take out emails. Okay, and the info from earlier on your system. Seemed like such a mess of privacy, hasn't it? Uh, info. I don't think it was anything too incriminating. I think it was just my Windows code, my, like my uh, license code. Let's have a look at this. I have legit Windows. Yeah, yeah, man. Because I like to change the color of things. Format C. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, Taylor, I've got a question for you. Why do you do, like, add zero to stuff? Because... Is there a reason for that? It's just for a value input. Oh, is just is this just so that you can adjust everything within the tree? together. Yeah, uh, okay, okay, that makes sense. I'm gonna have to have a call with you just so that you can talk me through. Mask anything? Oh, you just send me this one node. Man, there is so many in here. The ones you need is for the color mask and the mask mask for now. Wait, wait, wait color mask, and the, oh, the mask mask, hmm. uh, and add and subtract. Okay, let's see how this works. Wait, can you not copy nodes in? Okay, I'm going to need to append them. Uh, append, downloads, masks, 
Uh, so I want mask, mask, mask anything, add mask and subtract mask, append. So let's just pause cycles momentarily just so that we can speed things up. Shader mask would be useful. Well, as long as we're just controlling the masks outside, then we can add. Oh, yeah. Um, I will append that as well. Shader, shader mask. Okay. So if anybody's watching who does not have all of these additional mask groups, you can just do it as I was with mix RGBs. Oh man, this file thing heavy. Um, add mask. And then we also want to add um, subtract mask. And shader mask. Ooh, people are posting their vans and cars in the chat. That's cool. Man, Jake, is that yours? Nice. Do you live in your van? A van Helen. <laughs> um, group. We need. Uh, add mask, subtract mask, shader mask. You live in your house. I don't know. I mean, I don't think there's anything. I have looked at van life stuff for ages just because I think it's so interesting. Like, I would not mind doing that. I think it looks like a good time. You could live in it if you needed to. What was the other one I added? Oh, mask anything. Still cutting in and out. Is this for the... Ah, oh, okay. I think Blender is having a bit of a fit. Oh, and maybe I should just... um. Okay, start recording again. Cool. Yeah, OBS is great. Have you tried Streamlabs? Streamlabs has like loads of extra features. Um, okay. Mask and mask. Let's see what these look like. Oh wait, does there need to be one in the top as well? And then... Oh, that's cool. For masking out masks. Oh, for masking, I get it. Mask, mask. Okay, so add mask is just uh, add, I'm guessing. Nice. Subtract, I'm guessing, is the same. <laughs> Let me mask this mask's mask real quick, wearing a mask. Actually, I got a really cool mask. Um, one of my friends makes masks and sells them. And like, how freaking cute is this? It's got, wait, let me find it. She did like needlepoint embroidery on it. And it's got like a flower pan inside. How nice is that? Right? Everybody should, I feel like masks are often really, really ugly. So... Someone make Blender notice the Halloween mask. <laughs> yeah, do send us a picture of that one. Um, so mask anything. What does this do? Layering. Oh, so the layering is like the adding. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then it's got like a max, which is like a multiplier, is that right? 
Nice. Okay, I need to find a way of using these. I reckon they'll come in useful. I mean, what am I actually doing here? Um, Jake's got to go. Jake, are you going to come back for the blender battle in like an hour? You have a timer set. Okay, cool. Give us a shout if you are not going to make it. And the beer's low. Um, I thought we were doing it in an hour, just so that you can walk your dog. Um, oh, got to think about how to use these masks in this like massive noodles. Wasn't sure if Stephen agreed. Well, Stephen will be playing on his own if he didn't agree. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, walk, walk your dog quickly. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, how are we mixing these? So the shader mask lets you. Hmm. Just temporarily, I'm going to turn off displacement because it's going crazy. It's just like really slowing down the, the working this out. Okay. So I just need to make sure the water um, is the last thing. Yeah. On the, um, the displacement as well. Otherwise drunk ski will get aggressive. <laughs> okay. Um, Owen, move your ass. Yeah, well, I'm, we're getting pretty close. I just need to finish masking these off. I just need to like get my head in gear with it. Um, so I've been adding these each time, but the final one, this one needs to be like a mix, I think. Um, is that right? Maybe that's not right. We need this. I'm just trying to think of how we, oh geez, started disconnecting things. Um, yeah. Taylor, I will use your mask nodes, but I will maybe not use them in this one just because I need to get my head around them first. But they look super useful, so thank you for sending those. Um, right, displacements. Why is this already... Oh, right. Ignore that. So that's our displacement there. And then we are adding things each time, but we need to add them. Oh, so I can use one of your subtract masks to take the water out of each of my range masks. Okay, super useful. Just move all of my shaders up here. Move these down and then um, so where we have a range where it's white we don't want it to be white so take the subtract mask drop that on here and then I want to use this is it possible for me to flip this or do I need to do it manually each time Yeah, invert node. Or it's actually cheaper to do it with uh, one minus. Uh, 
and then yeah subtract okay sweet yeah that's working perfectly so again just need to do this to these three put this into each one and then again put that in uh, is that correct yeah um cool so that goes into the displacement this goes into the surface and we are beginning to have a beautiful landscape so let's aren't if statements super slow um <laughs> what do you mean for where are the if statements just in the back end um the if statements are just maths aren't they i always i assumed that they were just like yeah double check i think they're just uh like basic arithmetic just 3d things did a whole stream on um uh like logic gates making logic gates with math nodes uh so i think that he yeah so let's just hop into here so i'm going to make everything just initially uh black just fill the whole thing with black is there a way for me to flood fill this is that do you know if there's um like a a paint bucket tool shift k Oh, thank you. That's super useful. It's like having a hive mind. Okay. <laughs> Shift K. <laughs> Thanks, Taylor. Um, cool. So um, we will need to change our water level. But we have got sand, we have got forest, and then we've got city. So city is blue i believe and forest is green so first of all i want to just add some gradients so i guess i want to start painting some colors so we want to add um some like higher ground and then we're going to blur it a bit afterwards just to like make a riverbed and then we're gonna start using hue to um yeah paint on the different elements basically it's a really simple process once you've got this stage we're just masking um oh it's not running fast though is it and go back into the brush i'm just going to smooth this out Oh, sorry, I just realized I completely stopped talking. Um, yeah, it's kind of one of those things when you get towards the end of a stream or like towards four hours of speaking, your brain just starts giving out. Just going to add a little bit more darkness into here. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's fun. I'm super happy that there's still so many people here. So it's, honestly, thank you. I really like, I'm a, really humbled that you're all still hanging out. Um, yeah. And thanks for being a part of the server as well. It's been really positive seeing everybody's work. Again, like, again, the tearful at the end of the night. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know you are. As soon as we're in the hangout, I'm just going to like not hear the end of it. <laughs> okay, blend, adding hue. 
going to just grab some colors in here. So this is our height map. A dead man walk in. I would be surprised if I could still walk at this point. Um, I think this is city, the blue. Um, what is this? The 0 0.6, isn't it? So that's this last one. Um, which is, yeah, city. So I'm going to place the city around here. And so I want to increase the saturation and the hue, which is going to be color. Oh boy, that did not work. Is this not painting? The amount of time, yeah. Do you know I'm actually like prone to them? So I've already had you on hue, not color. Oh, did it not change? Thanks for pointing that out. Um, it's just going black though. What am I doing wrong here? Have I made a mistake? Maybe I should just set up another um, the option settings. Shouldn't it still just be using like a soft brush though? Um, because I haven't actually changed anything else. The fall off maybe? Yeah, that should definitely still be soft. Um, when you control Z, it reset your option settings too, if the blender is giving up on me. It is. I'm hoping it's just not my like computer failing. <laughs> I'm just going to add another layer here, and then I'm going to add another attribute layer. Call it col.001. And this one, we're going to use the value, uh, the value of it. How curious. Okay, shift K on here, and then. Okay, that's good. So this one could be our color. Um, and put the linear RGB conversion on there as well. It duplicated it. Yeah, I don't understand why it doesn't just make a new one, like a fresh one, when you do that. Um, but yeah, we just did a flood fill on there. So this is our, there we go. This is our value one, this top one, uh, control J value. And this one is going to be control J hue. Um, so if I just grab that over there. And then color O1 is going to be our position stuff. Um, so I'm going to set this to nothing. And then control K there. Oh, shift K. Um, right, going to grab some colors and we're just going to start painting on our city region. I would like to compare it against our height map though. So just to double check that, I'm going to grab the this into a mix node. And I'm also going to grab the value into the bottom here just so I can see both. Just overlay them like that. So I want my city. Oh my god. It's doing it again. I'm just going to use this as a mix. we go. So putting our city around here, we will have to change the scale of it a little bit. And then we're going to put our sand, I hope this is sand, 
just down the side of the river, on this side, and around here. Have sand in there, have a little bit of like an inlet thing. And then we're also going to have forests. Uh, eye drop, pick that up on this side of the hill. Now we've got to hope this works. If we get to this point and then it doesn't work, I'm going to be appalled. And build those shaders. Oh, this is exciting. Hopefully. Oh, I should have just gone for cycles. That would have probably done it quicker. Vertex data are based on the element before live UVs or shape keys. Sometimes it's useful. Ah, we have our water level way too high. Um, oh, sometimes it's useful to duplicate it and uh, have, so yeah, so it keeps the values. Great, so this is increasing the water level. And then if we turn on displacement, it might just affect the scale of our city as well, just while we're looking at it on the map, just make it way smaller. Um, maybe 50. Cool, that looks probably a bit better. And then that probably wants pulling back a little bit, it's probably too big, but um, one thing I do want is I want the balance between rock, like the stone and the glass buildings on the front of the node. Oh, we're getting so close to the end now. It's just these last few little bits. So I'm gonna add a a point here. I think it's about time we save as well. This is just saying not responding at the top. Hopefully it will come back. Oh, there we go. Okay, let me just save that. How bizarre, something's happened. So when I press control S, I, okay, that was weird. It was giving me a pie menu. How bizarre. Um, right, threshold. So this threshold is what switches between brick buildings and glass buildings. So I just wanna make sure that we've got that accessible from the outside of the node, just to make sure we have a good balance. Connect it up. There we go. And I'm going to change this input up to like 0.5. So half and half for now. Oh my god. I'm going to go across to cycles and hopefully, hopefully this will resemble a, a landscape. Okay, it sort of does. It's a little bit steppy. Turn on adaptive subdivision. Check we're not going to run out of RAM. Okay, I'll be honest, it's not pretty. But it is kind of what we were going for. Like the steeper parts of the grass, they are grey, and the, uh, let's change this to like 20, the trees painted on where we wanted to paint them, and the city painted on where we wanted to paint that. Um, 
Hey, Taylor. Thanks for coming. I can't believe you stayed for like the full four hours. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. And thanks everybody. Like, real troopers. Okay. I mean, this is, this is basically done now. I'm, I'm happy to call this one done. So yeah, thanks for coming by and I will post the file on my Twitter. Um, great for procedural maps. Yeah. I mean, with some like fine tuning, um, you could definitely use something like this for like doing rapid prototypes of like your cities. And obviously instead of texture painting, you could use like, uh, like a noise map or something and just put it through like a color ramp like this. And that will procedurally, like properly procedurally distribute your elements and you'll get a much smoother, um, height map as well, because we've got it stepped here just because we were painting like four different values. Um, but yeah, kind of an interesting process and as well, like using the height map to control where the water level is, gives you a lot of freedom there. Um, so like you could even raise this higher. Ooh, that was definitely too high. So now everything's going to be water. Um, if we make it like point four or something, it was point two seven before, but now it's going to be much higher up on the, the steps there. Um, yeah. So if you want to have a blender battle, if you want to come and do some like speed modeling in a very stressful way, there we go. The water levels up. Um, yeah, come and hang out, hop into the hangout and we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing it in there. Um, and I encourage all of you to actually, cause it's really stressful and you learn a lot about how to work under pressure. Um, so yeah, that's me done for the stream. Thanks for stopping by and, um, yeah, thanks. I'm going to call this one done. Oh, thanks, Matisse. I really appreciate that. Sorry, I'm losing my voice, kind of. I should probably grab a little bit of food and then we can do the blender battle. Thanks, Riaz. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we'll do like a more focused, like a um, like a more proper shader next time. I just wanted to try this kind of masking technique after I saw you using it, it kind of gave me some ideas for this. So yeah, thanks for, thanks for sharing what you were doing because that this wouldn't have happened otherwise. Um, yeah, sweet. <laughs>